The furor over Pollard's mistake made Seabiscuit a local celebrity. Had it not been for his jockey, West Coast sports writers insisted, the horse would have surely run off with a hundred grand. But the adulation was far from universal. In the prestigious racing circles of the East, most race trackers still regarded Seabiscuit with skepticism, if not outright scorn. Have you seen the well-to-do up and down Park Avenue on that famous thoroughfare with their noses in the air, high hats, narrow collars, white spats. Always the Eastern people would sneer. Oh, he's a California horse. And for many years they were right. <laughs> because it was the Eastern horses cleaning up on the Triple Crown races anyway. Go where fashion sits. Put on the ritz. If Eastern horsemen wanted proof of Seabiscuit's medal, Charles Howard meant to give it to them. On March 13th, 1937, he packed his horse off on an exhaustive cross-country racing campaign. Sea Biscuit will take on all comers, he told the press, and he'll mow them down like grass. Biscuit took them all on, back and forth he shuttled, from train to track, a smart, bubbling animal that broke records and horses' hearts. That summer and fall, the Eastern Racing Establishment dined almost exclusively on Crow. Shipping an unheard of 8,000 miles, Sea Biscuit blazed a victory in 10 major stakes races boosting his total earnings for the year to $144,000, more than the world's top money winner had earned in his best season ever. Sports-loving fans had found an idol, and back to the limit. But he did not win the coveted title of Horse of the Year. That honor went to an Eastern-bred three-year-old, the son of Man of War, and only the fourth horse in history to win the Triple Crown. His name was War Admiral. Imperious and temperamental like his legendary sire, War Admiral was infamous for throwing wild tantrums in the starting gate. But in a race, he was breathtaking. There's not a boat today can catch the Admiral's flying heel. War Admiral by four lakes. War Admiral didn't run. He flew. On the oval, no other horse ever got close to him. But some racing fans believe Seabiscuit just might. All Tristan wants to know if Seabiscuit can beat the great War Admiral. If Seabiscuit were going to claim the turf championship, he'd have to dethrone War Admiral. One of the century's greatest sports rivalries had begun. A match race fit right in with Howard's plan to make Seabiscuit a star. But War Admiral's notoriously cantankerous owner, Samuel Riddle, refused to commit. He had no intention of demeaning his horse's reputation, he told reporters, in a contest against a Western colt. So the Howard Barn returned to California to prepare for the next best thing, another go at the Santa Anita handicap. This time, they vowed, Seabiscuit would win. <laughs> 